What is going on guys? My name is Gatewood Brown and today I'm going to be taking you down one of my favorite day tripping paddle trails. This takes place on the lower Guadalupe River. Now much like my other river guides, even if you live far away from Texas, the methodologies and the tools we use in this river guide will also apply to the rivers near your house. The Guadalupe River is very representative of beginner to intermediate with small class one, maybe some class two rapids, but mostly class one plus. And this is going to handle a lot like those types of rivers. This guide will help you get out on the river in a low stress setting while also providing you some key information that should make your planning a whole lot easier. Because guys, we're gonna cover every single detail that you all need to get out there. And so right off the bat, we'll just dive straight into it. The Guadalupe River is extremely popular. It might be the most iconic tubing river in Texas. And that's because it's really close to a whole bunch of metro areas. This is 30 minutes from Austin, 30 minutes from San Antonio, about two to two and a half from Houston. And from Dallas, I would say it's roughly three to three and a half. Those are all of the biggest metro areas in Texas. So you can just imagine the amount of people that come here and access it. So because of that, the access points are really, really good and well thought out. The communities that are around this river are you know, they kind of cater towards the business. A lot of small businesses center around tourism and the river. It's a very friendly environment and you'll go there and have a really good time because it's vacation mode. But I say all that and even though this isn't an overnight trip and it does cater towards tourism, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can overlook the planning process. So that's what this is for. So in order to go kayaking on the lower Guadalupe River, there are three things that we're going to cover. And first up, we're going to discuss planning. That is one of the most important things when you're looking at a day trip or a multi-night kayak camping trip. The whole purpose for this video is to make it easier on you guys. And we're gonna do exactly that. We're going to start off by mapping the route. You start off in downtown Green, Texas, and I always use Google Earth Pro. That has just been the easiest tool for me to be able to go in, map out my routes, see the mileage, judge the access points, access some of the pictures that Google has geotagged in there, and then also save the route and any other details that I have about this section in my Google Earth Places folder. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Google Earth Places folder. We wrapped up the mapping part. Looks like we're gonna be doing about two and a half miles. Now, even though that doesn't sound like much distance, because this is such a social section of the river, that two and a half miles, if you're tubing or taking it easy, taking picnics along the way, that can actually end up being quite a long time, multiple hours. Or uh, I can also recommend that you go back in and do this route twice. Yeah, you either have a, an easy morning paddle or you could do it twice or you have a nice evening paddle whatever floats your boat this place is flexible so now we're going to talk about the characteristics of the guadalupe river this is a texas hill country river it is one of the more serious and bigger drainage basins in the hill country so even during periods of low flow you're still going to generally have enough to enjoy yourself and have a good time on the guadalupe and kind of like what i alluded to earlier in the video Tourism is built off of this river, so it feeds out of Canyon Lake, which is about 20 miles upstream, and the releases from that reservoir are what feed this river system. So because of all the tourism and the economic benefit to the locals, the reservoir does a good job of feeding it mostly year-round, and it comes out of the bottom of a, of a really deep lake. Uh, we're talking about almost 200 feet deep. 
So the water is generally very, very refreshing during summer months. This Guadalupe is very representative of the hill country. We're talking massive cypress trees that line the banks that are just beautiful. They form cathedrals over the river and it's to die for. <laughs> One of the things I look forward to most on this section. Also, they have really fun rapid sections and it's nothing too serious and none of them are very long, but it's enough to get your blood pumping and have a good time and use this sort of as a yeah, beginner right. trip to maybe hitting some of the other rivers or taking your family out on the river it is perfect for that. When you do come across those rapids, they're generally pretty straight and don't require a ton of technical paddling. Um, and then there's also really nice long pools in between these rapid sections. So it's just an ideal river to go enjoy yourself on. Everything you'll see in this video was done at about 200 cubic feet per second of flow, which is good. That's a solid amount. You won't have to do any dragging at that flow. It can be done below. It can also be done above. Okay, so moving on to category two. This is going to be the rental and the gear purchasing stage and I don't know, I think this one's pretty fun as well. All right, so most importantly, you're going to need some kayaks. The good thing about this location is that there are so many people that come to this area. A ton of outfitters and rental shops line the banks of the river and kind of around in town. Now, I always like to go in kayaks just because you can control your speed. The majority of people are going to be tubing. They also have family-sized whitewater rafts, so if you're newer to paddling, or you're taking your whole family, that is a great option because it makes rapid super easy. You just kind of bounce around and, and make your way down the river. It's great. And of course, if you do go the rental route, then one of the huge benefits is that they're at the start of this stretch. And so you can leave your car at the launch and generally in connection with your rental from that company, they offer shuttling services. So once you finish, they'll bring you right back to your car. And that is a huge perk, no doubt about it. If you do want to go with the hard-shelled kayak, I recommend looking at Austin Canoe and Kayak, which is a local store you can rent from, as well as TG Canoes and Kayak. They are uh, you know, pretty similar. They have very good equipment, and they'll be able to hook you up. I'm not sure if they offer shuttles. I don't think they do, but you can go pick up your equipment and then take them to this section and send it from there. It's also a good way to demo boats and figure out what you want to eventually purchase. And for the rest of the paddling gear that you will need, make sure to check out my kayak camping gear list. Ignore all the tents and the sleeping bags and stuff, but the rest of that gear will apply and it does a great job of listing out all the links uh, so you can go purchase it if you need it. But generally speaking, for a day trip, you just need equipment that is going to keep your gear dry and that is going to be most important. That's number one. All right, and moving on to the third category. This is gonna be execution, and this is what we're going to talk the bulk of the video about, because this is the most important, the most fun, and I don't know, I just get excited thinking about going on the Guadalupe. So first off, we're going to be talking about the do-it-yourself method. The takeout is going to be Cypress Bend Park. There you can leave a vehicle and then you'll drive the rest of your cars to Downtown Green. Because Downtown Green is a historic little town, it has a lot of tourism. They have the biggest public parking lot that I have ever seen. So you can park there and then unload all of your gear in your kayaks and do the buddy system carry all the way down to the river. It is 0.2 miles from that parking lot all the way down to the river, which seems like a long way, but at the end of the day, it's free parking. And once you drive back to the launch, you can go to stores and eat and you know kind of carry on in downtown. So it's really not a bad setup and you won't have to worry about getting ticketed or towed. You're going to get your kayaks, walk down the sidewalk and then keep left because in between the guardrail on the bridge and the hillside, you can access the river through there. It is within the right of way and completely legal. And then, you know, probably arguably the logistically 
more friendly if you just have one vehicle is to go the outfitter method. With this, rocking our tubes is going to be right on the riverfront. They have you know, a giant tent during summers where they have tubes and boats and kayaks and all that. So what you can do is go and wait in line. I recommend going there early because it will fill up. There are tons of people that go and do this thing, guys. So go early, rent your stuff, and then you will put in right at the bridge. You'll cruise, and then once you get to that Cypress Bend Park, they'll be the ones that pick you up and bring you back to the start. Okay, so now that we have the logistics figured out, let's kind of talk about what to expect along the paddle. All right, we just got to our put-in location, and all of the guys are assembling up, getting the kayaks all loaded. About to head down river for our day one of paddling here on the Guadalupe. Whenever we start, we always head up river about 50 yards because you'll see what I'm talking about when you guys go. There's a pretty juicy rapid that you can start the day off on. You do have to hike up it, but I swear it is worth it. It looks pretty gnarly and it's a good time, but it's a great way to get warmed up for the rest of the river, even though this is by far the biggest rapid of the day if you choose to do it. Other than that, it's you know still a beautiful paddle to go up there and check it out. So after we've done that, we'll then turn around and then head down river. And on this particular trip, it was Memorial Day weekend, so it was a lot busier than usual, but something special was happening. I was teaching Lisa, my then fiance, now wife, how to paddle in rapids. So I was very excited for the day, she was too. And of course, we had to stick her in the sun dolphin. You always have to put the rookies into the sun dolphin. This is Lisa's first time out on the river. Super exciting, teaching her how to paddle. And guys, I'll tell you, I was so proud of her. She did amazing through all the rapids. Her performance also tells me that this is a beginner friendly section because this was her first time on swift water and she crushed it. Granted, I have to brag on her. She does a really good job learning and you know using the skills that we tell her, but she absolutely did an amazing job. And because of that, you know, I think we might have uh, some couple kayak camping videos coming up. So be on the lookout for me taking Lisa out on the river. Uh, I think you guys will really enjoy those. And as you're paddling this section, take your time, enjoy it. This is a vacation atmosphere like I mentioned earlier. People will be set up on the riverbank for picnics and homeowners will be out there, you know, spraying water guns. Like I said, guys, it's a, it's a really good time, a great potential, like, you know, day trip for a family, or you can stay in some of the resort style properties that are around Green and New Braunfels. They do have a Schlitterbahn, which is a huge deal up there. Uh, they also have several rivers in the area, so you could do Guadalupe in the morning, Comal in the afternoon, or Guadalupe during the day, then do a different section, and I don't know, there's just so many opportunities to, to just have a full weekend of river time. You know, even though this is a day paddle, there are opportunities to camp along the river. There are, for instance, I think Rock and R has a campsite that's about at the halfway point, so you could do the float however many times you want to, and then also go back to your dedicated campsite. There isn't really primitive camping on this on this section, so you will be looking at your typical campground or an RV park or an Airbnb on the river or some sort of a, a resort property. I really implore you to go and check out this section. If you've been itching about getting on the river and thinking it's something you might enjoy or thinking it's something you and your kids and your wife might enjoy, uh, go give it a try. I mean, thousands of people do this section every single summer. Some of them look like hooligans. So if they can do it, so can you. <laughs> but it, it really is easy. So say you're really into kayaking, but your buddies or your family, you know, they're not quite convinced. This is a perfect starter stretch because not only is it fun and there's just, there are great vibes and a wonderful atmosphere, but after your float, you can go into town and there's something for everybody there. There's good entertainment. The historic green hall is amazing for country music and dancing. The Grist Mill is a famous uh, restaurant, right, that overlooks the Guadalupe River. There are boutiques and there's outfitting stores and there's really cool stuff. And that's just in green. And then just, you know, a mile away is New Braunfels. And that brings even more tourism along with the Comal River. So guys, 
it's sections like this lower Guadalupe that are the reason why I'm into kayaking. It's a great beginner place. However, if you're an intermediate, you can still have a blast and send the rapids and hike back up and send them again. As you can tell in the video, there are grins from ear to ear, guys. Our crew had a blast. I took a bunch of first timers and they all had a good time. Thank you so much for watching another one. If you want to see all these tips and planning, check out my adventure series. That is really where you're going to see all these planning strategies and methodologies put to good use. And guys, the scenery out here in Texas and all over the United States is just to die for. Thank you all for watching another one. I'll catch you on the next episode. See ya.